everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in if you're there. I am here in Missoula, Montana and representing Charlie the Chicken Mushroom. So we are going to be making um, some delicious savory dishes with Ruby the rhubarb. So rhubarb is kind of sprouting up everywhere right now and it'll come back again um, for a second round. So uh, I wanted to showcase it because this is a really great time of the year when the season is changing. Um, there's still that cool, crisp and uh, chill in the air, but you know we've got those sunny days and all these new beautiful vegetables and fruits to cook with. So this dish, um, kind of in the style of Provence, south of France. Um, so we're taking a lot of things from the garden and making this really light but savory springtime stew. Um, so again, it's great for those kind of um, early spring days. And then we're going to also pickle some rhubarb to put into a salad and use that pickling liquid to make the dressing. So we're going to use a lot of rhubarb today and we're not even making pie, which is my favorite thing to do with rhubarb, but I wanted to try something different and share something different with you guys as well. So to get started, um, I'm going to get my rhubarb pickling first. So it's a quick pickle. So I mean, some pickles can go for days. Um, this is going to go for about 10 minutes while I'm talking to you. So I have um, warming up my pickling liquid, very simple. And I didn't add any water to this like I normally would because again, I'm using it for my dressing and it is uh, a quick pickle. So I want to get as much flavor into the rhubarb with this as I can in a short amount of time without diluting it. So I have about three quarters of a cup of champagne vinegar, uh, a quarter cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Uh, peppercorns and a little piece of bay leaf and I have my rhubarb chopped nice and small again so in this quick time it can take on a lot of the flavor and then I have oh I just inhaled the vinegar and I'm gonna cough <laughs> uh, and some fennel fronds in there so I was looking for um, tarragon leaves for that kind of nice anise flavor I couldn't find it and they had beautiful fennel at the market so I got that and I used the fronds which had that similar flavor profile why do I keep sticking my nose in the vinegar I don't know it's strong but that's what we want so you get the um, extra added herbaceousness in there so we're gonna let this that's it sit for as long as we're cooking and we're gonna start our soup so in this pan that I have heating up I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, olive oil and get that warming and then we'll talk about our vegetables so I'm starting with some leeks um, we use the white parts and we kind of compost um, the green I've started my compost bucket everybody I'm very excited if you saw my thing about composting it's been going very well I have um, almost a full bucket in a week but that's because I do a lot of cooking so um, but it's been great and thank you soil cycle for the compost to start my new garden so again full cycle love that guy um, so we got leeks. I don't know how I got off on that tangent. Leeks, um, carrots, and then I have some green garlic, which looks like this. Um, so it's kind of like a shallot, a leek, and some garlic, had a baby, and it's delicious. And it's just that young, fresh garlic flavor. So again, I've used up to about here. You can go farther. Um, I put this in the salad, so maybe we'll do that. But just really nice aromatic, something different than your normal garlic that we use all the time. Like I said, it's spring. So take advantage of like all these unique, really fun ingredients. So we've got leeks, um, green garlic, carrots, and bell pepper, a teeny tiny bit of red bell pepper just to add a little um, sweetness. I don't want it to really shine through because we want the rhubarb to shine shine in the background here. Uh, rhubarb is very tart, which is why people often cook dessert with it and put, you know, make jams and um, jellies and pies and it's delicious, but it does usually need that added bonus. And when you're dealing with something very acidic, um, the go-to usually is kind of uh, fat or kind of maybe something sweet to kind of cut it. So. We're using chicken stock in this recipe. You could totally use veg stock and keep it vegan. Um, but the brightness of the rhubarb is gonna shine through and that's what we want. But that fat from the chicken stock is gonna kind of um, coat those sharp edges to make it a little bit more tolerable for our palates. So already smelling all those delicious 
kind of aromatics in there. So we've got that saute and we're gonna get that kind of soft. I've also got my rhubarb chopped up. We've got potatoes ready to go in. It's a very simple um, stew, like I said. So my chicken stock that I'm gonna be using, I've reduced down to about four cups. Um, we want the potatoes to kind of break up and thicken the soup, which is why I've cut them thin so they'll cook in a short amount of time. Um, but you don't want to add too much to this um, pot and make it a soup. We want to make it a stew, right? So we want a little bit more viscosity than we would a brothy soup, and that's what's going to kind of um, make it a little bit heartier. So, all right, we've got the rhubarb pickling. My veggies are sauteing. Let's talk about pea stew. I am making a pea stew um, to go into the soup. It's an accompaniment. It is basically, am I talking too fast? All right, let me know. Uh, it's basically the cousin of pesto. So again, in France, they make pea stew and it's very similar. Um, ground up garlic, olive oil, and salt in our little mortar and pestle, just like grandma used to do. And then we're gonna add some fresh herbs, a little more oil, and really just kind of make um, a nice fresh herb sauce. So you could use whatever herbs you want. Traditionally, basil, of course, um, is what people go to, and we are gonna be using basil. But I've taken the tops from my carrots, uh, which are awesome. Don't throw those away. Uh, a lot of time I make pesto with them, but today I'm gonna make pisto with them, and I'm also gonna put a little bit in our salad. So. Um, you know, these are great just to, again, add variety to your dishes. You know, I love adding fresh herbs in my salads because it just brightens them up and adds a whole depth um, and dimension of flavor. So this is going to add a little bit of crunch. All, obviously, that like fresh garden flavor, really green tasting. Um, and we're going to have a little bit in our pisto as well so that we can kind of bring all the flavors together. So let's give this a little stir. Come on over here. So I had a little accident. Even the pros chopped their fingernails off. Um, but don't be alarmed. We're okay. And we are going to finish our piece too. So basil. I've got the fennel fronds again. So I'm going to take half and I'm going to put half in the um, soup as a garnish. And I really just want to give my basil and carrot tops like a head start. You could definitely do this in a food processor, make the pea stew in a food processor. I'm making a really small amount, so in my big food processor, I'd be like cleaning out, you know, the whole thing to try to get it. So I'm using my mortar and pestle. You could also just, you know, use a knife and then go to town. Um, but we're just gonna give it a head start. And how often do I get to break out my mortar and pestle, like whatever. So, again, like grandma used to do. So some people will add, okay, get away from my man hands. Come back up to my face. Um, some people will add nuts, like they do in pesto or cheese. Um, you know, again, it's really up to your interpretation of what you want it to be. I have nutritional yeast that I use a lot um, in place of like things like Parmesan cheese that will again add some nice flavor, um, a little bit more of like a different kind of saltiness to it. So again, it's a nice little workout. Let's check on our veg. Again, we want to um, sweat the vegetables, not sear them or brown them. So a medium heat, pinch of salt to help kind of draw up the moisture, and I think we're ready to add our potatoes. I've been soaking them in cold water just so that they don't brown in the time that I'm talking to you. I've got a rhubarb. About a cup of rhubarb um, was what I did. And just kind of give it a stir. Salt and pepper. 
Don't be afraid. You can always add more though, so go a little slow. And then my stock isn't seasoned at all um, with salt or pepper. I like to do that at the very end so I have complete control of what that's going to taste like. Okay, so we go back to our pisto. So I did want to also just say hi to everybody and um, thanks for all the love and support with my other project, Soup for the Soul, Missoula. Um, we've had a lot of great success feeding the community here and it's just been great to see everybody um, supporting and doing good things and so I really can't thank you all enough. Uh, hopefully you guys have had some time to maybe bust out your chicken mushroom books and do some cooking with the kiddos. I know it's uh, tough for those parents out there sometimes to entertain all day so um, I hope that those are possibly coming in handy and you guys are enjoying them. Book three which uh, is our newest edition is about a water skiing incident with Charlie and the Garden Gang. And the recipe is for Fig Twins barbecue sauce. So if you don't run the book, now is a great time because grilling season is upon us, finally. Here we are. Um, and so it's a really nice alternative to regular barbecue sauce. It uses literally no sugar. Um, I sweeten it with a little honey and then I let the figs do the talking. So it's great on burgers. I love to do it on lamb burgers, chicken. Um, I've even grilled mushrooms with it. So get your hands on that. Get the barbecue sauce going and try something new this summer. All right. Pisto is looking good. It's a little chunky, but you know, it's such as life. I've already worked out today, so I don't need to do too much more. Um, Potatoes are in. I've got this beautiful asparagus. Look at these fatties. Some people don't like like the huge ones. Um, this is a perfect dish for these because they're going to kind of braise down a little bit with the potatoes. Um, the thin ones will work fine too, but these are great for making a soup. So I'm going to keep them kind of like my potato size, fairly, fairly large. They do get a little bit, um, you know, more fibrous towards the base. So Use your judgment on how much you want to take, but these are gonna get nice and tender in the soup. Again, add that fresh spring flavor. All right, so we got all of our vegetables and rhubarb in the pot. I'm going to find a pot holder and put my stock in there. So I'm putting in literally just enough to like barely cover the vegetables. I have a little bit left to add if I need it, but I'm going to crank the heat on this guy. Give it a little stir. Cover it. Maybe. Oh. Have you had trouble finding the lids to your pots? Nope. Not the right one, but we're gonna use it because it works for me. All right, so we're gonna let that simmer. We've got our rhubarb pickling. Now we're gonna make our salad dressing and finish our salad ingredients. Um, so the rhubarb is again, it's gonna be pretty tart in the salad. And now it's got that nice kind of sweet pickly brine going on. So I've got my greens in a bowl. I'm just gonna add some pear. I think like this again is the time that I love. I mean, summertime's good too, but I just love eating pears this time of year. And they just all seem to be like super ripe and delicious right now. So I'm gonna leave those kind of big. I'm gonna leave my rhubarb nice and small. So everybody, again, I just wanna check in. Today was a little bit of a frustrating day for me. And um, I know that we were all going through this journey differently. No two um, journeys are the same in these times. So I hope you're all doing really well. I'm wearing my lovely t-shirt just to show you that I care um, because every day is a different roller coaster. And today, you know, I woke up, it's a beautiful day and I wanted to seize the day. And I was just, I turned on the news, which I never really do these days, um, you know, just to check in and immediately was frustrated with the situation. And I think the important thing is how you channel that. And so I uh, was very proud of myself. I went for a run, 
Um, I had a good long cry. I punched the bed. I did every, everything I could to kind of get those emotions out of me. And another thing I'm doing is cooking um, and cooking with you guys. So thank you because um, this is one of my favorite things to do. It's definitely my meditation. I can kind of just breeze around the kitchen and not even think about what's going on out there. So make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves and um, doing healthy habits and also just, you know, remembering to check in with one another and breathe throughout the day and we'll all get through this together. So, um, pears and salad. We're gonna do the dressing. I've got a little lemon here I'm gonna roll. This is really for finishing the soup, but it was here, so I'm just gonna cut it right now. Perfect, okay, so dressing. Just gonna take, you know, maybe, Pretty and pink. Get that, George. Ooh. <laughs> so it's only salad for two, um, but I definitely want this to be, again, a flavor that comes through. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to taste it because I want to know how much honey I need to add. And it's pretty tart. Oh, but it's good. It's good. Okay, but how would we know if we didn't go in there? So, my mom would be very proud of me because I used to hate vinegar, but I'm surviving. And champagne vinegar is nice, and I thought it was appropriate for the meal because we are in Provence, we are in France, we are eating out of the garden, we've got our champagne. So, it's also a vinegar that's not um, quite as sharp as other vinegars. So, Remember we didn't put any water in the brine. And so, you know, a white vinegar or something else might be wicked sharp and wicked sharp, wicked sharp kid and um, too strong. So this is a nice kind of perfect balance of vinegar strength, um, if that makes sense to both pickle our rhubarb, but also appropriately dress our salad. So, we've got vinegar, our soup is boiling, simmering. I'm cranking it up to speed it up, but ideally this dish, once you have everything chopped, should take about 15, 20 minutes of cooking time. Um, I'm gonna need salt and pepper. I like a lot of pepper on my salad. I always have fresh pepper at home. When I first started dating my now husband and I looked in his spice cabinet and he had the like pre-made pepper um, you know the stuff that you see on like the picnic tables from 800 years ago quickly had to change that and um, he listened and here we are six years later so thanks George or what should I say you're welcome for the pepper advice so I'm putting a good amount of pepper in there because this salad again you want your dressing to be a little bit potent um, with flavor because it has a lot of work to do and a lot of greens to cover So, ooh, slowly drizzle your oil of choice. I'm an olive oil girl. I know that there's grape seed oil and avocado oil, and I don't know. I just, I'm an olive oil girl. And especially in Provence, I think they would approve. I hear something bubbling. Check on our stew. So we're doing good, but our veggies are still crisp. So they're gonna need, you know, another five minutes or so. Our dressing is pretty much done. And it's like normally a three to one ratio of oil to vinegar. Um, again, that's a general rule. So if you like it more vinegary, add more vinegar. Um, if you want to kind of dull it down, add more oil. So again, we need to taste everything as we go. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I've never had that before. I've never made this dish before, everybody. So this is new to me, but man, as soon as I tasted it, that little bit of honey um, really helped to bring out 
that rhubarb and the um, fennel fern. So that was fun. Can't wait for you guys to try it. So in the dressing, I'm going to put some fennel ferns as well. What do I do with my glaze, George? Oh, here it is. And that's ready to go. So salad, we've got some sunflower seeds I'm going to put in there. We've got our, I like nuts on my salad. I like nuts in my almond joy. Um, so whatever you have on hand. I mean, I had um, pine nuts, cashews, but these are kind of perfect for today, I feel like. And then our rhubarb, again, I'm going to do the very last minute. Soup, how's our pisto? So again, pretty thick. You really want it more like a liquidy um, oil consistency. So as I say that, I'm going to add some more oil to it. And this, at the end, you just dollop on top. Um, and it just, again, adds, it's like bringing the garden together in one bowl. This is like the garden gang meal um, of, our, of our spring right now. I'm so excited. So not only do we have all the beautiful produce, but we've taken the tops of everything and different herbs from the garden. And this is like all in one pot. So thank you, Provence, for the inspiration. Grab your favorite glass of rosé and treat yourself. Treat yourself to rhubarb dinner. So in the spirit of time, I'm going to have you guys come in and just check out our soup. Again, you probably want like a little bit of a lower simmer. I'm going to taste this as well. And check for seasoning. Mmm. Okay, I don't always get this excited, but toot toot, I'm tooting my own horn. Because I've never made this before and it's so good. Um, the secret to this one is that chicken stock. I can definitely taste the richness of that, which is awesome. I started with like a five gallon pot and I reduced it down to almost five cups and that's how you get really delicious stock. Um, so if you've got the time right now um, and you've got your compost scraps, you can make a delicious vegetable stock, but I don't have the storage for a ton of stock. So I usually take it down to, you know, two of these, two or three of these containers and I can freeze one and then use the rest in um, recipes throughout the week. And I just sip on it like tea. So again, use those scraps, zero waste if we can. And this is going to be about probably another six minutes for those potatoes to get tender and break up. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a sample on how to plate. And then this is going to go back in the pot. But we've got our delicious savory rhubarb stew and I'm going to take a little bit of our pisto that we did with carrot tops, basil and fennel fronds and we're just going to put a little dollop. I like to hit everything with just a little bit of lemon. I'll hit the whole pot too when I'm done. And that literally is your stew. We've got our beautiful salad. And I'm just going to dive in here to get our pickles, being mindful of the peppercorns and the bay leaf. So just don't kill anybody with those big old bay leaves, but I want a good amount of rhubarb around here. This is, all right, our rhubarb vinaigrette dressing. Hit that with a little lemon. And 
some bread. I know I'm being a bad, bad French girl and I don't have a baguette right now, but I do have delicious gluten-free focaccia. Um, gluten and I have not been getting along lately and so I can't thank Tandem Bakery here in Missoula, Montana who makes delicious gluten-free bread options. Um, so I have this beautiful focaccia to eat alongside and I hope you guys enjoyed tuning in and learning about uh, savory options for rhubarb. And again, this will make a great Mother's Day dish. The kids could help you with this. I definitely recommend getting a pair of those chop gloves because they can then get in the kitchen and help you cut all those vegetables. I mean, put those kids to work. I know you guys are stressed out and working really hard. You got kids everywhere. Chop, chop, let's get them, let's get them cooking. And so get those gloves, Mother's Day meal, Rhubarb pie would be a great addition to this meal. I'm going to be making a few rhubarb pies myself for some special moms. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. Stay safe out there. Be well. Love one another. Check in with everybody. And um, as always, let your freak flag fly. Bye. Mmm, it's so good. Toot, toot. Toot in my own horn. Because I can. Alright, we gotta put it back in the pot.